Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on foundation level sample paper discussions. We are talking about the set B and it's time for us to step into the chapter 4 and this chapter 4 will be talking about the dynamic test techniques or simply called as test techniques as well. If you remember again from our previous sessions of these sample papers, in fact our tutorials have discussed a lot of techniques as a part of this chapter and altogether there will be at least or exactly seven, uh, 11 questions coming in the examination. So out of 40 you have 11 questions which you really have to be worried about in order to get this score. This could be really a deciding chapter in the examination and this would also involve K3 level questions which requires you to apply a little bit of your skills you which you gain about the techniques now again not taking a lot of your time let's step into the questions and try understanding that what kind of typical questions can be asked to you and what are the patterns the way you can handle them the tips and tricks to deal with them so the very first question coming in from the chapter 4 is question number 19 following the sequence which of the following provides the best description of exploratory testing now, I think these type of questions needs your confidence on the syllabus and the tutorial which you have been through. Most importantly, the more you know the content, the better you know the content, you would be sure about what is the right answer for this. And of course, there would be minute informations which will be used as a trick as a part of these questions as they are completely from the syllabus. If you have missed out any critical information to be read out, you would go wrong with these questions. So let's go to the options. The option number A here says a testing practice in which an in-depth investigation of the background of the test object is used to identify potential weaknesses that are examined by the test cases. So number one point here, I do not have any kind of in-depth uh, you know, investigation and that to the background of the test object is being done as a part of the exploratory testing. As exploratories are always called as ad hoc and they are very on the high level. In fact, does not have in-depth involvement of any kind of analysis or understanding of the test object precisely, right? So that doesn't at all happen as a part of exploratory. And second, at the end, they say that it is examined by the test cases. Now, test cases are certainly not a part of exploratory because we most of the time say that exploratory is test-less execution. We don't write detailed steps in order to perform exploratory. That's where it saves our time. And that's about the uniqueness of this technique. So we do not have test cases predefined or written for the exploratory testing. Option B, it says an approach to testing whereby the testers dynamically design and execute tests based on their knowledge, exploration of the test item, and the results of the previous test. Now that sounds an interesting option for us to get competitive with respect to the exploratory testing. Yes, as a part of exploratory testing, you do create some high level one-liner tests which are created dynamically that is before the execution not as a part of the test design phase or well planned much earlier in the life cycle this is on the go on the fly when you plan to do exploratory testing you just write a one-liner a high level one-line test saying that this is what we are going to explore as a part of the session and of course the basis becomes your knowledge exploration of the test item and the results of the previous tests, which becomes your input as a part of this to define what exactly need to be done. But let's confer with the option C and D, an approach to test design in which the test activities are planned as uninterrupted sessions of the test analysis design, often used in conjunction with the checklist based testing. No, for your kind information, we do not really create or perform any test analysis and design sessions for this and we do not concatenate this technique with checklist based as they are two different experience based techniques that is exploratory and checklist so it does not have a relationship between them coming to option d testing based on testers experience knowledge and intuition that's a very wonderful option to get confused because a lot of the time any instructor would tell you that exploratory testing is one among the experience based testing techniques and it requires the basis as the experience, knowledge and intuition. Now, the slight difference here is that it's not the tester's experience or tester's knowledge or intuition. Moreover, intuition is not a 
prerequisite or basis to apply exploratory testing. So what exactly do you do here? It's mainly on the knowledge of the application, the domain knowledge, the typical defects knowledge, what you have got in the past, and the tester's experience can certainly be varying. So not always a tester experience can be counted here as a basis to do the exploratory testing. Right, A fresher who might be experienced with six months or probably nine months cannot be asked to do experience testing because here we need vast experience of domain or typical defects knowledge in order to perform this. So the right answer here is B, an approach to testing whereby the testers dynamically design and execute test based on their knowledge, exploration of the test item and the results of the previous tests. Moving to the next topic, our next question here is number 20, which of the following best matches the description with the different categories of the test techniques? Number one, coverage is measured based on selected structure of the test object. Two, pro the processing within the test object is checked. Three, tests are based on defects likelihood and their distribution. Number four, deviation from the requirements are checked. Number five, user stories are used as a test basis. Now using notations for the following four options, that is black means black box test technique, white means white box test techniques, experience means experience based test techniques. So all you have to do is one, two, three, four, five has to be classified into these three categories and that is very straightforward. All you need to remember is how do you categorize uh, the test techniques under various categories and it's all covered in 4.1 of our chapter one. The very first topic of chapter four uh, sorry, chapter four, which talks about this particular classification. And keeping it very straightforward, when you talk about the coverage measurements on the structure, structure is a synonym of white, white box testing. So you can straightforward say that, yes, this is one among the white box testing technique. Uh, number two, the processing within the test object is either done by unit testing or component integration testing. So that is again done by white box testing approach. So yes, that's another technique which is like statement coverage and decision coverage. So that's also white box. Number three is tests are based on defects likelihood in the distribution. This is more of experience based because someone who is experienced can predict that, the, how the defects can be distributed. And of course, uh, their likelihood can be determined by that basis. So it is experience based. Number four, deviations from the requirement. The moment the term requirement comes, requirements are basis for black box test techniques. So this comes under that category. And number five, user stories are used at the test basis. Don't forget, in Agile, user stories are requirements. So instead of telling directly requirements, they're telling you, uh, you know, kind of related word, which is user stories. And in fact, they are requirements, but in Agile. So that's also falls under the black. So keeping it very straightforward and simple, uh, option, the right answer here is, A, black is four comma five, white is one comma two, and experience is three, which certainly talks about the categorizations of various test techniques under these three categories. Let's look into the third question of our day and this tutorial where we're talking about one of the techniques which is equivalence partition. And as a part of this, we are picking up a question. A fitness app measures the number of steps that are walked each day and provides feedback to encourage the user to keep fit. And there are several categories provided to you. All you have to do is pretty much clear confident that how these things can be transformed into a table because until unless you put it into the table you cannot say how exactly it can be applied and what number of test cases or how many valid test cases which falls under the same class uh, which option covers all the partitions and sort of thing cannot be answered so please have a habit of putting it on the paper in order to get that clarity now another tricky thing when it comes to equivalence partition and boundary value analysis is uh the numbers. So when they say above 1000, it simply means 1001 is the lower limit of that range, not 1000, okay? 1001. So above that words like less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to will certainly trick you around. So be patient, read them carefully and look at the answer. So I've just quickly drawn up a table for your reference here. So if you look at the table here now, this is what my classes are. Uh, less than or equal to 1000, that is up to 1000, then 1001 to 2000, 
then the next class is 2001 to 4000 and then 4001 to 6000 and the last one is above 6000 which is 6001 and greater than that right so being having these classes set here all we have to do is answer this question that which of the following sets of test input would achieve the best equivalence partition coverage best that means which option here covers the maximum in this particular given scenario so we all have to do is pick up each option and put it on this table if you say a it says zero yes it falls under the first class thousand falls under the first class 2000 falls under the second class, 3000 falls under the third class, and 4000 also falls under the third class. So, if you see all these five values are covering three partitions out of five, right? If you go with B, 1000, first class, 2001, third class, 4000, third class, 4001, fourth class, and 6000 is fourth class as well. So, again, Option B covers three partitions, first, third, and fourth. None of the value falls under second and the fifth class. So three partitions once again. C, one, two, three, first class, two, three, four, five, third class, three, four, five, six, third class, four, five, six, seven, fourth class, and five, six, seven, eight, fourth class. It equivalently covers three partitions out of five once again. Now, I think we're just left with one more option, which could be variant, that is D. Triple six falls under first class. Triple nine falls under the first class. Triple two, sorry, four times two falls under the third class. Four times five falls under the fourth class. And four times six falls under the fifth class. That means one, three, four, five. Four partitions are covered out of five in option D. That's where D is covering the best partition coverage as a part of this given options. So no questions asked. The right answer here is D, triple six, triple nine, four times two, four times five, four times six covers the maximum number of partitions as a part of the scenario. If you have any questions, you can always re-listen to this particular uh, video. Just go back, start again from the EP and see that what exactly I've tried explaining you. If not, go back to the tutorial and you would still get what exactly you need to understand this particular technique. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.